Hello, my crafty friends. Hope everyone's having a very nice day. Um, I'm doing kind of a little bit of a documentary um, about the thyroid surgery that I just had. Kind of want to give some women, a, you know, that are getting ready to have surgery a, a general idea of what they do before the surgery. Um, I found out that I had a multinodular thyroid goiter uh, several years back and they said that it was benign, there was nothing wrong with it and not to worry about it, but every once in a while I'll get it checked. Well, finally, um, I started feeling really funky. I started getting these really weird, hot, flashy sweats, um, dizzy spells. Uh, I felt like I was starving. I mean, I was hungry and I couldn't get enough food. And um, then I had this problem where my feet stayed cold and it being like 90 degrees outside and I, my feet were like freezing. So my whole body would be freezing. And um, I noticed I gained like a lot of weight in, in like two months time, a whole lot of weight. And I was like, you know, I better go get checked because something's not right here. And I felt very agitated, um, kind of like confused, agitated, lethargic. Um, I, I, I can't even explain. Almost like a, a, my mind was bouncing off the walls. It was just, it was terrible. I look horrible. Um, I, I am one week and one day, and let's see, I had my surgery on the 15th. And today's the 24th, so it's been like um, almost nine days. So I'm nine days, uh, or eight days. I don't know. Anyway, about eight or nine days um, post-op. But um, what they use, you do, you go into the, um, they, they found the, uh, what do you call it, um, the gorder. But when they decided to do an x-ray of it, they did like an ultrasound and they found a hot spot and they were pretty sure there was some cancer involved so um, we decided to go ahead and take the thyroid out because the the nodular um, had it, it was eat up with nodules there was nodules everywhere all over the thyroid gland and two of the nodules one of them had grown like a hundred percent and the other one was eighty four percent so there was two nodules that, that were really getting big so the Gorder was growing and I was having a hard time like when I go to bed at night or I go to lay down because I got asthma I kept getting this gurgling noise in my throat and I'm like, you know, that's this this is not normal and since they've taken thyroid out that gurgling has has stopped So basically like if I laid flat a certain way the gorder was going towards the inside of my throat so it was causing me um, some breathing problem, problems as well. So anyway, um, I went into surgery on the 15th. I was the first surgical patient that they had. Um, I came to, I, I think probably about two hours later, because it's about a two hour, two hour, two and a half hour surgery. Um, they do have a microscopic surgery, but they did not do the microscopic on me. Um, it's just certain patients that they do microscopic microscopic on and gorders a lot of times it's just too much of of there so it's typical thyroid surgery anyway um when i came to i was in massive amounts of pain oh my god i hurt so bad um i couldn't talk good i mean very my voice was very very hoarse and um they had to give me four shots of morphine and dilaudid finally to get control of the pain I finally get upstairs, but when they got me upstairs, I was over-medicated because, you know, the Dilaudid kicked in, and I mean, I was out of it. So, they didn't have to give me hardly any pain medicine that particular night. Uh, they ended up having to admit me, yeah, and um, I stayed 36 hours. Um, there is an, another problem with the thyroid when they removed the thyroid gland. So, I had a total thyroidectomy, so when they removed the thyroid gland, um, Sometimes the parathyroids, there's four, four, four little glands behind the thyroid, which is called the parathyroid, and sometimes they can get agitated or get damaged. Well, one of them got damaged, and my thyroid levels were an 8.6, then it dropped down to an 8.2, and um, 
then it dropped down to an 8.1 and then a 7 something so we started the IV calcium and then they um, let me come home I'm taking calcium pills now so I have to be taking calcium until the parathyroid decides it wants to um, come back to life sometimes they do and sometimes they don't it just depends on the you know how much damage there was done but it's you know I'm doing okay as far as the you know that goes um, they're checking out my uh, when I went today they checked my uh, calcium levels to make sure that they're you know staying well in the the range the normal range of what they should be so I'm taking calcium four times a day and um, then they've got me on the levothyroxin, which is the um, synth. It's a generic for synthroid, so I'm taking the generic um, synthroid brand. So far, it you know it takes about two weeks or three weeks to get in your system, so it takes a while to get into your body. So in the meantime, which you you know I was diagnosed with hyperthyroidism with a multi a toxic multinodular goiter. Um, meaning that it, it it there was hot spots and that it had become poisonous poisonous and it was actually making more hormone hormone than it should but it was the nodule that had taken over so that one particular nodule that had the one cell was taking over the um my body so anyway um n now that it's removed uh what happens now is the any other cells that's in my body because the lev levothyroid um, takes about two or three weeks to get in your system. So in the meantime, you experience a little bit of fatigue. Um, you're almost going through the same thing you went with hyperthyroidism, but now you're hypo. So hypo means um, a little bit opposite that you're not making enough thyroid hormone. So you you're fatigued. You're tired. You um, you could tell that your body's changing. So my body's doing some changing right now because the medicine, even though I'm taking it every day, it's still not in my system. So I've got to wait and you know until it starts kicking in. Unfortunately, this particular type of medicine, um, it, it, I was already told in the hospital that I may lose my hair. So um, that is the only disadvantage about this particular medication. While your thyroid is, you know, all the cells are dying in your body, you you could be losing, um, you, not only are you losing the thyroid cells, but the medicine's not in your your system good enough, so your hair might start falling out. So, so far, I've got my hair, it hasn't fell out yet, but it's, the doctors have said that you will, um, most likely, it either go to a thinning, and, and then it will thicken back up, or you will lose your hair, so... I'm going to prepare myself for losing my hair. I'm I'm a little upset about it, but um, what do you do? You know, uh, life is life. You know, sometimes you got to deal with the punches, and this is another punch that Linda's having to take. Anyway, uh, I was going to do the video last week, but I'm going to be honest with you. I looked horrible, and I still look horrible. My neck was so big. I mean, it was it was really swollen. I mean, just. I look, I don't know, I can't even describe it, it was horrible, I mean, it was huge, it was all swollen, and the way they, they cut you open, see, they, they pull the skin up here and clamp it, and then they pull it down that way and clamp it, so they're actually almost like ripping the muscle open, you know, stretching it out or whatever, so when you come to wake up, your, your, uh, your throat is very sore. You're very, very sore, and I had I had a really bad headache. In fact, I still am still having the headaches um, because it's the muscle all around in this neck area is just, even, including the glands right here, your lymph glands. Um, you know, it's just bruised and brutally beaten, if you know what I'm saying. So it's it just really you you have the headaches you just don't feel good you don't feel like talking to anybody you just want to lay there and sleep or whatever and anyway um it, you automatically just just overnight you know the next morning when i looked in the mirror my neck was like huge and swollen it's still swelling but not as bad and um you end up with uh bruising oh my god the bruise was horrible last week it was terrible i, I would I didn't even want to show it. It was, it was, but it's still bruised, as you can see right here. 
in this area here. Um, that's where the tape was. So the tape went, uh, the bandage went from up here to here, down, across there, to over here, and then back. So you had this bandage about like this. And um, it, it was just, when the doctor removed the tape, she removed it the next day. And, uh, cause they, they, they put a drainage tube in. So I write, uh, where's it at? Okay. I don't know if you can see it. Well, it's, it's almost going away, but right here is a little scab. Um, that's where the drainage tube went in, but it went, it was underneath this incision and it, it came out. There's a little hole right there and she rips this off and then she yanks the, uh, tube out and the tube drains all the blood and saline and all that stuff that they used in the surgery so I was all black and blue under here I mean it was just black and blue and um, I didn't get any stitches uh, the only thing that I have to worry about is um, this piece right here this is the the incision itself and some of the tape has already come off but she said do not touch it don't remove it don't do anything with it it will fall off on its own so that's what I'm waiting and apparently it's not ready to fall off but there have been um, like like right there if you notice right there um, that that is a piece that fell off and um, I, I don't know where this incision is at but that that might be a bruising too right here I'm, I'm not really sure exactly but there's the scar is probably about I'd say maybe about three inches close to it, two and a half, three inches, somewhere around there, but, um, let me just take this and give, give you a close-up, uh, as you, as you can see, there's the bruising from there all the way, and then there's the, uh, the, this comes off eventually in the, the shower and all, but, and, and it's, like you say, you get real swollen, so anyway, um, you're going to be kind of out of commission for uh, about, I'd say, nine days. Um, that's about how long it took me to get over this. And I'm still kind of like weak and icky feeling. Um, today I had my doctor's appointment, so my husband took off work and he took me to the doctor's. And uh, we did the, um, you know, she checked me out and uh, she did the calcium level to check my calcium. She said she'd call me and let me know. And I've got an appointment with the endocrinologist in September. She told me to call his office up tomorrow to see if maybe they could possibly take me in a little bit sooner. Because, she, you know, with the calcium levels and then with the uh, levothroid uh, and with some of the symptoms that I'm having, you know, now, right now, uh, my, my levothroid might be a little too low or it could be a little too high. So, um... She, she said, you know, the earlier I get in and they start checking my levels out, the the the, more, the quicker the healing. But she did mention that uh, it takes about a year, almost a year, for um, a person with thyroid, uh, you know, to, that has a total thyroidectomy to actually get their levels corrected. So, you know, it's going to be in and out of the doctor's offices um, for the next year Probably, I'd say, I, he's probably going to have me going like every three months or every two months or maybe, I don't even know, maybe every month. But um, that's going to be the next steps. But like I said, you will be sore and you can't eat anything the first day. The second day, I was able to eat soft foods. And that's about, usually, about the only thing I've been able to really actually handle. Except for yesterday, I finally started eating regular food. It was good. It was good. So good. I was so glad to eat the regular food. Um, but that's about it. Uh, as far as goes, I'm doing pretty good. Um, while I was out today, I asked my husband if he would take me to, um, where was it that I wanted to go? Dollar Tree. Yeah. And I wanted to go to um, the thrift store. And I felt good enough to go to Dollar Tree. And we went into Dollar Tree before the doctor's appointment. So we left um, 8 o'clock this morning is when we got there to Dollar Tree, right when it opened up. So there was no nobody in there hardly. And I practically owned the store, you know, just went through and grabbed what I wanted to grab and uh, left. And... Um, so it wasn't too hectic there, but the thrift store, we went after the doctor's appointment, and we stopped by K&W Cafeteria and got something to eat, and I, uh, I mean, I was 
getting starting to you know get in a lot of pain with my back and then um I, I, I realized then it was just maybe I shouldn't go to the thrift store but then I changed my mind and wanted to go so I went so you're going to see a haul video um the thrift store the two ladies that I've been getting a lot of my craft supplies from the one um they they're like volunteers and they volunteer two days a week and they were not in there today unfortunately I missed them but um they're really nice but uh they knew that they were not I wasn't going to be going in there at least they thought I was not going to be going in there this week so um they donated or the, the one lady she donated her stuff to the, the thrift store so she didn't call me because she figured I was you know sick and all so I went to the thrift store and um sure enough there was some goodies there so I bought some goodies and um I have did craft some things. I got to thinking, you know, I'm gonna have a scar on my neck, and I don't like wearing turtleneck sweaters and you know anything tight, choky around my neck. Um, but I don't want to be seen with the scar, so I started a uh, working. Uh, excuse me, I started working on a couple projects, and um, I've been tinkering around with my crochet needle and some thread and. I don't know, something hit me about this pink cording. I had some pink cording in there that's, you know, you don't use it all the time. It's just, a, and it was a great big ball because it was like on a um, spool. So I decided to take a, the ball out and do something with it. So I crocheted this, I hope I can, it shows, this really beautiful um, necklace set. And this is what it looks like. And it's got the rhinestones. The rhinestone bling, and that's the bracelet. So I made the the necklace, the bracelet, and the earrings. Earrings I couldn't fit on there. So I liked it so well that I made two of them. So I've got two of these. Um, one I'm going to uh, put up for sale in, in Etsy when I get up enough. Um, I'm, I'm going to just make a whole bunch of little jewelry things and see what Etsy or uh, Zibit will do. But this is what it looks like, and... Um, I was really tickled with it, and you might be seeing some more videos of me um, in the next, I'd say by July, uh, August the 4th or the 5th, um, while my mother was out sick, and, you know, I was having the problems with her, and, you know, having to go over there and stay, and, and it was just really hectic, but anyway, um, while I was with her, I had gotten a great big huge haul of stuff and I was having to sort through all kinds of laces and trims and you name it. And I, since January, because I had gotten so much stuff, I had to condense it down. So I, I wanted to condense it so I'd have more space. So I ended up condensing everything down, putting them in the um, 12 by 12 storage totes and you know, or, or trying to organize things by color, and while I was doing some of that, I'd, like, grab a bag full of stuff, and I would take it over to my mom's house, and I would, um, re-roll re it into, uh, because I, I ordered, uh, some lace cards, but the lace cards were starting to get expensive, so I ended up buying that, um, the Sizzix ball, mason ball jar die, and I made several lace cards, you know, through that, and I put as much of all that lace that I could possibly put on um, l laces that were not quite full bolts. But anyway, it really did organize um, a lot of the lace and it condensed it down. But while I was doing that, I started cutting um, a couple yards off of each spool. And um, I've made 13 lace kits. So that I think, yeah, 13 lace kits. So next week... Um, I'm going to be doing some videos probably this week to show the lace kits. And um, I'm going to be throwing on the uh, internet. And I'm going to be selling the lace kits for $35. And uh, $5 shipping. Um, so it would be $40 altogether. So um, it's going to be a fairly, they're fairly large lace kit kits. Um, it's not no 20 yards. It's up there in the like 50, 60, 70 yard uh, lace kits. So, um, uh, of course, each one, you know, each kit's going to be priced differently. So, 
um, my starting out point will be $35 for the um, the smallest kit and then the largest kit will be like $40 it just depends I'm yeah I'm gonna kind of like look around and I might might just do it just $35 and that be the shipping also I, I'm not sure but um I do have 13 lace kits that are going to be going up online um I'm going to do a, it's a, I don't know if I'm going to put it in Etsy or what but it's going to be a first come first serve basis I will not be making any more kits um I just did this while I had the opportunity and the time and I really don't have the time now to be ripping apart lace you know making more lace kits so I did 13 of them so 13 women will have the opportunity to have um, a lace kit if they're interested and I will show those kits you know online and um, do like I guess a Rosella uh, which is Zender Lee here you know how she does her wedding bouquets um, wedding appliques I'll probably do it something like that well, anyway, I hope everybody has a very nice evening. Um, I do want to let everybody know that uh, the um, they managed to remove my thyroid. Uh, they got everything in time. It was basically the beginning stages, so I was lucky there. Very, very lucky, and it had not spread anywhere, so that was really good that um, the cell had not spread. And... Um, it was in the process of getting ready to go into cancer, though. So, in um, I had the one cancer cell, but it wasn't an um, what you call it the fast. Can it's a slow type of cancer, and uh, I, she had a name for it. I can't remember what the name was, but anyway, it was where I don't have to have the uh, radioactive iodine treatment or things anything like that she didn't think I would need it um you know because it was within the thyroid gland in the nodule and where it was located so apparently where it was located and it not had not spread to any other parts of my body um because of that uh I'm one of the lucky ones where I don't have to have the um RAI or RAU or whatever you call it and um you know, right now, the only thing I'm dealing with is the cancer cells. I mean, not, the thyroid cells are dying out um, because I no longer have a thyroid. So I'm no longer making thyroid hormone. And even though I'm taking the levothyroid, which is thyroid hormone, it's not, it, it takes several weeks for that to get in your system. So I'm going to be going through um, a couple weeks there of feeling really tired, exhausted. Um, not feeling well and you know that's to be expected because that's all your thyroid hormone hormones are dying it's not going to harm me though because i've got the levothyroid in my system um but it's not like it should be and uh once it gets in my system then i'll be able to tell a difference i'll know what but um the only thing that i worry about with the thyroid gland uh I had an aunt that had a thyroid problem, and she's no longer living. She died, um, gosh, she died young. She was in her 40s or something. But anyway, uh, she had a thyroid problem, and she got huge. I mean, really huge. She gained, like, massive amount of weight, and I've already gained weight. And I'm like, oh, boy, I hope I don't gain with the, you know, I'm hoping the levothyroid it will keep my weight under control. There's a lot I need to learn about it. I don't. I just like I said, um, I'm a beginner stages of learning how to about the thyroid gland. So I got a lot to learn, and I did join a group so I could kind of get to understand what's going on. But I'm still lost. Everybody's talking about this and that, and I'm like, uh, you know, what are you talking about? So you know, I'm kind of like a a little sheep right now that's lost in the woods and can't uh, figure out how to you know deal with this but I will deal with it you know it's just a matter of, of um, experiencing day by day and and I'll go from there I hope it makes me feel better because I noticed right after I had my spine surgery I I have not felt really normal at all since my spine surgery I just haven't so that you know, I think that might have triggered what my, my immune system got low and me having lupus too, you know, so um, I think that's what caused everything, but at least I'm, you know, they got it out, it's, you know, now it's to the next step and the next step and the next step, 
and uh, I hope I don't lose my hair. You know, that's the only thing I don't want to do. Uh, you know, I've always had long hair, and uh, I've had it short a couple of times, but I just don't look good in short hair. So, um, I don't know. I just, you know, the thoughts of losing my hair just bothers me, you know. But if it happens, it happens, and I'll just have to deal with it. Um, I just hope it grows back. You know, it's they, you know, they said that it will grow back, but, you know, um, I don't know that. You know, it's it hasn't happened to me yet, so I don't know what I'm going to experience when that comes along. But um, I'll try to do a video on the thyroid uh, update maybe later on and uh, let people know, you know, what happened three weeks later or four weeks later or something um that way you guys can know about what what the thought what to expect with your surgery you know like i said i didn't have the rai so there's a difference there you know about that i didn't have the microscopic surgery um my surgeon said that it's an eight hour surgery and they don't like to keep patients they said there's the risk outweighs the cons meaning that um you're under anesthesia for eight hours versus two hours taking the thyroid out. That's that's what she said. So um, she doesn't do the microscopic. So I'm like, okay. But then maybe she doesn't know how to do the microscopic. I don't know. She's been a surgeon for a long time, but um, very nice doctor. Uh, she was very nice. Uh, she was a uh, very very skilled, very skilled. Um, but she's 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 cool. She's a cool doctor, though. She uh she dresses up like she's going out of town, out out for the night or something. Uh, she had a bright yellow dress on, and uh, she's a black lady, and uh, very sweet, very sweet doctor. And uh, she did, you know, everybody that I've talked to and my husband's talked to, they all have uh, said that she's really a good doctor. But when she came in, you know, I was like. The first time I met her, she walked in. I, I looked at her. I was like, "Oh my gosh, you look like you're to myself. You look like you're going out for the night, for the evening, you know, out partying or something." Because you know, the way she was dressed, and today she came in with this bright yellow sundress, and you know, and, and I was like, "She's just a bright colored person." I mean, she, she's very spunky, very cheerful, um, full of life, if you know what I'm saying. So I I like her though, but she's you know she's a trip. She is a trip, and she's got kind of like a sense of humor. So you know you can't help but laugh. But she she is a good surgeon. I I think I um was under good hands. So if um if I ever have to have surgery again, which I already know I am, there's there's one more surgery that I'm gonna have to face, and uh, I don't know when I'm going to decide to do it, but um, she did recommend that I, I try to go ahead and get that out of my way, too, because um, I have what you call, uh, what do you call it, Barrett's esophagitis or something like that. It's a acid reflux problem, and I've had it for about nine years now, and I mean, I take like a, a Prilosec and uh Metoclopram, which is Reglan, and mental, and I still get, I mean, it's, I get heartburn so bad, and, and I can be a dead asleep, and all of a sudden, the acid would just, you know, while I'm sleeping, would just come up to my neck, and I'll lose my breath, so, um, it's gotten to the point where it gives me chest pain now, and I don't, I can't tell if I'm having a heart attack, or if it's the, uh, soft, you know, the uh, acid reflux. So, it kind of scares me sometimes because I'm, the way I hurt, it's like, oh my gosh, I have had a heart attack. So, I've decided um, after I heal up with this, I'm going to go ahead and try to get that straightened out behind me. And that way I can, you know, maybe be, end up feeling a lot better and then I have my life back, you know, hopefully. But anyway, um, I hope everybody has a very nice evening. I've got a haul video coming up. It's probably not going to be today. I'll probably do the video tomorrow. So um, I try not to do more than one video. Um, I t usually about twice a week uh, is what I usually try to do. Because I just, you know, when you see one video um, of one person, you don't want to see five or six videos unless it's super duper like like a tutorial or something but um i just you know i don't know we'll see what happens with this thyroid thing um, like i said i'm a little new to it and i don't know how to explain it but hopefully it will um 
help somebody, you know, that's out there that's getting ready to have the same thing that I had. And like I said, it's the first day is your roughest, and you will have a headache, and you'll be sore, and you know, throat, throat. But it's it's tolerable, and you know, with they'll give you pain medicines, and um, I'm nine days, you know, eight or nine days post op, so you know, and I'm doing pretty good now. While I was at the thrift store today, I did get a little bit icky though. Um, I kind of over pushed though, because I we had already been to. The Dollar Tree, and I bought like 60 some dollars worth of stuff at the Dollar Tree. Um, a lot of it was groceries, but um, then I bought uh, then, then we went to K and W at cafeteria, the doctor's office. I had to go to the labs, then I had to go um, to the thrift store. So I kind of went to too many places and I paid for it. So um, that's the only thing. I and mean, your voice will uh, not sound like it used to was before the surgery um you're gonna have some times where your voice will go get hoarse and uh i'm surprised i'm not talking as long as i am but um you will get a hoarse voice too and it but it comes back and it does and uh, in the morning times when i first wake up my voice is like a frog i sound i sound like a frog but then after i get something in my you know drink in, in, in me and all then i start feeling better and i start talking better but you know everybody have a nice week and um for those that are getting ready to have the surgery good luck to you i hope things go well um it's not as bad as it's you know it sounds but you know i, I want you to know what you're going to go through but it's um I guess, like you said, the first day is your worst. You know, the first 24 hours is the worst. And then once you get past that, then then it's, you know, you're up and about, you, you know, walking around, doing things. Um, you still have to lay down and rest, you know, and all. But nine days post-op, and I was able to do what I did today, you know. That's telling you that, you know, life is not, it's not that bad. Well, y'all have a nice uh, evening. I will talk to you guys later. Love you guys. Bye-bye.